And we're blessed this weekend to have with us a dear friend, uh, Pastor uh, Robert and Debbie Morris from Gateway Church, senior pastors of Gateway Church out in Dallas, Texas, with us again this weekend. Um, he has just has an anointing on his life and a love for our church and all of our churches joining in today. And uh, he has a word that God has laid on his heart for us to receive. And as I've been preparing for this weekend, I've been praying, Lord, would you help my heart be open and ready for everything that you want to teach me, everything you want to grow in me, everything you want to challenge me in today. And I pray that you'll have that same spirit. And I know that as you do, God's got a word that is just for you. So at all of our locations at Christ Fellowship and all the churches joining in with us, would you put your hands together? Help me welcome Pastor Robert Morris. Thank you. I'm really, really glad to be back. Uh, my wife, Debbie, is here. And uh, just to let you know that uh, in May, we celebrate 40 years of marriage. So, and I know what you're thinking, that uh, you think, man, you guys really were young when you got married. It's true. It was the biggest event of uh, fifth grade. And so... But um, I'm glad to be here. We love Christ Fellowship. We love Pastors Todd and Julie with all of our heart. We just love you guys so much, so proud of you. We love Pastor Tom and Donna. We, we're just grateful to be here. And uh, so thank you very much. <laughs> she, if you didn't hear, she said, we love you. So let's all say it together. No, I'm... <laughs> no we, we, we love Christ Fellowship. And so we're in the Dallas area. And so we're just kind of Christ Fellowship West. So, uh, but we love you guys very, very much. So Pastor Todd has been very gracious and he's going to allow me to actually do a two week series. So I'm going to preach this week and next week. So, but uh, it's a series is called Beyond Blessed. And I wrote, I released a book about a year ago on this subject. Uh, but I've got to kind of give you some history behind this uh, teaching. So we'll, we'll talk about it this week and next weekend. Um, but I wrote a book in 2001 called The Blessed Life. And that book has gone around the world. Uh, it's in 40 different languages, uh, millions and millions of copies. Uh, Debbie and I, uh, it's a book on giving. And we actually felt led to give all the proceeds to the church. And that book still to this day, it's uh, you know around 19 years old, brings in over a half a million dollars a year to the church. So it's just phenomenal what God's done with it. And in that book, uh, what happened was a friend of mine came and he said, well, you come on, he had a television program. And he said, well, you come on the program and teach on giving because I teach that we get to give, not that we give to get. And there's a big difference when you get it straight in your heart. And God blesses us when we give with the right heart, with the right motive. And so God blessed that book, it took off, but it was just a book on giving. It wasn't a book on all the areas of finance, it was just on giving. And I got all these letters and emails saying, Pastor Robert, I'm giving, but I, I still have credit card debt. And I, I didn't understand that because I didn't write a book on how to manage your finances. I just wrote on giving. It was like, if I, if, you know, um, like we talk about grooming, you know, you, you, you uh, shower, you use soap, you use shampoo, you know, you use um, deodorant, you brush your teeth. So if I just wrote a book on combing your hair, and someone wrote me and said, I'm combing my hair, but I still stink. <laughs> I said, well, there are other things you have to do as well, you know. And so I wrote the book on giving. So I've been wanting a long time to write the, the companion book to it. And so I released it again last year called Beyond Blessed. And what I mean by that, let me say this. I don't, I'm not talking about materialism, okay? I'm talking about that God blesses us so much so that we're able to bless someone else. And it's a life that all of us wanna live. And it is a blessed life. So I wanna to talk to you about, that's kind of the background of what we're gonna talk about. So the, the, the key is, this, this book is about stewardship. 
So one's about generosity, one's about stewardship. So let me give you, I've got three points. If you're writing, you can write these down. If you're not taking notes, you can write these down. Um, So number one is, it takes two legs. It takes two legs to live a blessed life or beyond blessed life. And here's what I mean by that. Generosity and stewardship. It takes both. In other words, I want you to think about this. God is the one who blesses us so that we can be a blessing. He blesses us so we can bless others. He blesses us because he loves us and so we can be a blessing. But think about if you're only generous, but you're not a good steward, it would actually be against God's nature to bless you because you're not gonna steward his resources well. In the same way, if you're a good steward, but not generous, that's called tight, Why would God bless you? Because his purpose is to get the resources to the churches, the missionaries, the poor people, the people that need them, and he's looking for someone to funnel his resources through. So if he blesses you and you're a good steward, but you're, you're not generous, why, why would he bless you? You see what I'm saying? So it takes both of these. It's kind of like a, the old cartoon character I saw growing up. I don't remember which one it was, but they nailed one of his shoes to the floor. So he was just kind of walking, you know, in circles like this. That's the way it would be if you're generous, but not a good steward. You're never going to go anywhere. And if you're a good steward, but you're not generous, you're not going to go for it. That's why I say it takes two legs. I named the blessed life, a blessed life, not the blessed wallet or the blessed pocketbook, the blessed checking account. No, a life and a life walks on two legs. And so that's the first thing I want you to understand is for God to really open the windows of heaven over you, you've got to be generous, but you've got to be a good steward and you've got to learn how to be a good steward. Now, I have three children. They're all grown and married now. And uh, we have nine grandchildren, which is fantastic uh, when they all go home. But anyway, um, (laughs) no, I I love them all. And, um, but, uh, but I don't have the energy for all of them anymore, but uh, but we got these three kids. So we have Josh, our oldest son, then James, and then Elaine. So I told all three of them, uh, I will match, when this is when they were young, I'll match whatever you put in the bank. Just trying to teach them to be a good steward, you know, trying to save. Well, James, uh, it just came naturally for him to be a good steward. I mean, he'd get $50 from grandparents, he put the whole thing in the bank. And the other kids, I would say, now listen, you can spend 25 of this, but if you tw- put 25 in the bank, I'll match it, you'll actually have 50 in the bank and you can still p- spend 25 on a toy. They said, no, I wanna spend the whole 50. <laughs> but James would say, I'm gonna save the whole 50. So I was saying to him, but if you spend 25 on a toy, <laughs> because he, he was breaking me, you know? And then when he was 12 years old, he started working part-time after school. And he he said, now, Dad, you said you'd match, you know, everything I put in the bank. He had thousands of dollars in the bank. Josh and Elaine borrowed from James. (laughs) I borrowed from James. (laughs) And I quit, though, because I couldn't afford the interest. But... He just was a good steward. So I knew he had this stewardship thing. What I didn't know was that he was generous because he always did it in secret. And I didn't know about it until when I wrote The Blessed Life, um, one day a lady came to the church and she wanted to buy 10 of the books. And she's telling the receptionist, she said, I read this book and I got saved. I gave my life to Jesus. And she says, I was in the middle of a divorce and I said to my husband, I'll give you everything you want in the divorce if you'll do one thing, if you'll read this book. So he agreed. He read the book and he got saved. They called off the divorce. So she's telling our receptionist this. And then she said, so I want to buy 10 books for my friends that don't know Christ. So she goes down to the bookstore and she gets the 10 books. And when she goes to pay for it, she said, the lady at the bookstore said, it's taken care of. They've already been paid for. And she said, well, who paid for them? And the lady of the bookstore said, did you happen to see when you were talking to the receptionist, there was a young man behind you about to get on the elevator? And she said, yeah, I think he was taking out the trash. And she said he was. 
That was Pastor Robert's son. He's our janitor, which is the job he had when he was going to college close to our house. And when he heard you talk about that you wanted to give the books away, he came down here and paid for them. She wrote me a letter and told me that. Do you know what I found out? I found out that our son that I thought was so tight <laughs> was actually helping several widows in our church pay their bills. But nobody knew. And I have watched God bless this young man supernaturally, unbelievable ways. And let me tell you why. Because he's a river, not a reservoir. Because it flows through him, because he manages what God gives him well, and he's generous. Please hear me. Many of you are generous, but you've had a difficulty in managing your finances. I really would encourage you to get the book, Beyond Blessed, because I go through why be a good steward and how to be a good steward. And it's really important because God blesses us supernaturally. In the same way he blesses us supernaturally when we step out and give, he blesses us supernaturally when we get our finances in order. So number one, it, it, it takes two legs. Here's, here's number two, uh, why talk about money? I just wanna bring it right out in the open because some of you might be thinking, um, I don't personally think that a pastor should talk about money. And you, it might be your thought. And you might also be thinking, I definitely don't think you should write a book about it. Uh, well, my response would be, um, the Bible has a lot more to say about money than you might think. As a matter of fact, look at every time, every time that people came to worship in the Old Testament, they always brought an offering. But what you need to know is who implemented that. God did. God said, you can't worship me if it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> God said that. God started tithing. In other words, he's the one that implemented tithing. A pastor didn't come up with that. God did. Tithing's in the Old and New Testament. Uh, one of my critics, you know, said, you know, Pastor Robert talks about tithing. It's not even in the New Testament. I thought, have you read the New Testament? <laughs> it's in there eight times. And one time Jesus himself says, you ought to tithe. That's enough for me. You ought to tithe. That's Jesus. That's in red. Matthew 23, 23. So it's all through scripture, but God came up with it. So why talk about it? By the way, Jesus taught 38 parables. 16 of them were about money and possessions, 16. So here's a simple question. Was Jesus trying to get their money? No, he was trying to get their hearts. He was trying to get their hearts. Let, let me show you the scripture, Matthew six twenty one. for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I've actually heard some pastors misquote the scripture. They say, you know, the Bible says where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. That's not what it says. It says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. In other words, your heart follows your treasure. I had a pastor say to me one time, he said, I know if I can get the people's hearts in the church, then they'll give. I said, actually, if you can get them to give, then they'll get their hearts in the church. That's what Jesus said. Uh, so I travel and speak at other churches and pastors' conferences and all, and I was at this church a few years ago, and the pastor said to me, um, hey, if you see something uh, that you could help us with, you know, let us know when you're in the service. And I said, okay. And so I'm in the service, I see something, we go out to dinner afterwards, and he said, did you see anything that could help me? And I said, yes. Um, I said, apparently, you don't think giving is a blessing. And he said, well, why would you say that? I said, well, when you were leading the people in giving this weekend, you were saying, we're, we're gonna give, and then you said this, but now this is not for the guest. This is just for our members. I said, that right there told me that you don't see giving as a blessing, because why wouldn't you want the guest blessed too? I said, it'd be the same thing as if you stood up there next weekend and said, now listen, we got some new clothes from Macy's 
and Fifth Avenue, Saks, and we got uh, from Nordstrom and, uh, you know, from Neiman Marcus, and they just had them left over. We've got truckloads of new clothes, and you can go out there and get as many as you want, as much as you want, but this is not for our guests. This is just for our members. I said, see, when I preach on giving, I know I'm actually helping the people. I'm not preaching on giving to get more money in the church because you don't provide for the church. God provides for the church. I was talking to this guy in our church one time and we were just kind of joking. He's a, he's a, he's a giver, got the gift of giving. And I said, you know, uh, you, you don't provide for the church, God provides. And we were, we were really joking around, we're good friends. And uh, I said, we, you know, we don't need your, your money because God takes care of the church. And he just jokingly said, well, you needed my money to build this building. And I said, no, we didn't. I said, God built this building. And so he said to me, well, he used my money though. And I said, no, he didn't. He used his money. And I said, and the day you start thinking it's yours, I don't want to be anywhere around you if there's a lightning storm going on. See, we've got to come to that realization and understand it's God's. And it's okay if we talk about it in the church with the right heart. Because Jesus talked about it with the right heart. So it takes two legs. Why talk about money? And here's number three, being a blessing. I didn't read you a scripture a while ago, but I had it in my notes. Genesis 12, God said to Abraham, starts it out. Genesis 12, think about how early this is in the Bible. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. So um, I wanna ask you a question when you think about this. Would it be wrong to ask God to bless you? Because I think the devil tells us that's wrong. You know, it's wrong for Christians to talk about money. It's wrong for Christians to pray for money. It's wrong for Christians to pray to be blessed. That's wrong. So I wanna show you two scriptures in the Bible. These are the only two scriptures that talk about this man. Only two in the whole Bible, just two. I want to show you this. A guy wrote a book on this years ago, and he's a great guy, and it's a great book. Uh, but First Chronicles 4, verse 9 says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. More honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. The name Jabez means pain. Pain, that's what it means. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Notice he's asking God to bless him and enlarge my territory or increase my business. That your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Another way to say that would be is that I could be a blessing to people. Instead of causing pain, I could cause happiness and joy. I could be a blessing. Now watch this. So God granted him what he requested. Okay. So my question is, is it wrong to pray to be blessed? Because here we have a guy that did, and if it's wrong to pray that way, then why would God answer that prayer? I don't think it's wrong to pray and ask God to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Because God wants to be a blessing to people. God wants to help people. God wants to love on people. God wants to show his grace and mercy to people. So when your heart's right, I think it's okay to pray for your business. I think it's okay to pray for a raise or, or a bonus. I think it's okay to pray for a, a promotion. And, and please hear me, it's God working in our hearts. And when he works in our hearts, then we say, you know what, I could be a blessing. If God would increase me, I could be a blessing. Because here we've got a man in the Bible and here's what the Bible calls him more honorable. And yet his prayer was, would you bless me? And God granted him. Okay, so let me give you an illustration. Let's say that you live in a small community and you own an apple orchard. And there's a guy in the community who's a mechanic. And he fixes the widow's cars for free and he pays for the parts himself. And he's just a great guy. And he works hard uh, but he just kind of barely gets by. He's got, you know, several kids and they're all good, hard workers, honest people, but he just kind of barely gets by. So the dairy farmer, you know, gives him milk 
and the chicken farmer gives him eggs and you have the apple orchard, so you give the family apples. And then another family moves in the community and he's a good hard worker too and he's a plumber and he also is the same thing. He just has a special heart in his place for poor people and for widows and if they can't pay their bill, he still takes care of it. And so you decide, you know, I'd like to bless them with some apples too. And then another family moves in and then another family. And then you look at a, a plot of ground that you have that you've never uh, planted before and you think, you know, if I clear the stones out and, and fertilize over there, I could probably plant another orchard over there and I could have more apples and I could also bless more people. And I'm, I wanna say this because it's not wrong to think this way when you're planning financially and uh, my kids are getting older and I'm gonna have college coming up and weddings coming up and you know, I've got a, you know, so it'd be good if I could have a little more income plus I could bless some more people. And so you plant this field and then when you lie down that night to go to sleep, you pray and ask God to bless you. Is that wrong? No. Don't let the devil convince you that it's wrong to ask God to bless you so that you can provide for your family and so that you can be a blessing. That's what I'm talking about when I say beyond blessed. I'm telling you, Satan has done such a number on us that we feel like, well, that would just be wrong to ask God to bless me. It wouldn't be wrong because you can be a blessing. Um, a while back, Demi and I uh, were driving and we, it was a several hour drive and we stopped to get gas. And normally I just put it on my card, you know, and, um, and which I did. And then I pay for it at the end of the month. We don't have any, you know, credit card debt or anything like that. Um, but we went into the little place, little gas station, go to the bathroom and all. But normally I just go back out, but I, I got this craving for this drink um, that, um, now this is gonna sound kind of bad, but just stay with me, okay? But about twice a year, I get a craving for a drink that um, someone taught, taught me, showed me how to, uh, in high school. This is really sounding bad. Um, so, so let me just go ahead and tell you what it is because I know your mind's starting to go. It's, it's not an alcoholic beverage, all right? It's a, uh, but every, about twice a year, I like to drink this, okay? Um, Dr. Pepper with peanuts in it. <laughs> you like it, Pastor Tom? <laughs> okay. Hang on, so, so let's just take a poll, all the campuses, okay? And the churches that are joining us, hey, London and Sweden, love you guys. Um, how many of you have ever drank a drink and put peanuts in it? Can I see your hand? Okay. How many of you have never even heard of that? Can I see your hands? <laughs> how many of you think that that's the grossest thing you've ever heard in your, okay. <laughs> try it, just, tr just try, okay. So about twice a year, I get this craving for this. The reason I'm saying that is I just walked, I would have walked in, gone to the restroom, walked back out, but I had to stop by the counter. That's why I'm saying this, okay? So I had my Dr. Pepper and my peanuts, and uh, you have to get two bags of peanuts, by, by the way, to make it through the whole Dr. Pepper. So anyway, so I had two bags of peanuts, my Dr. Pepper. And so I stopped by the counter, and there's a lady in front of me, and I'm starting to get a little frustrated because she's counting coins out, you know. Uh, but then all of a sudden I realized what she's doing, and my heart broke. She was buying a dollar and 32 cents of gas. And so I did what any of you would do. And so I went out to the pump and she was there. She was about my age and she had her, like her son and daughter-in-law there and she was buying it for them. And I said, I wanna buy you a tank of gas. And then I carry hundred dollar bills to give away when the Lord tells me to. And I said, I wanna give you a hundred dollar bill but you have to listen to me for one minute. That's what I tell people. And they do it because I got a hundred dollar bill set. <laughs> And I said, um, I used to be on drugs. 
and I was in jail, and I was messed up. And a guy told me how much God loved me and told me that it wasn't just believing in my head, but it was giving him control of my life. And I gave him control of my life and everything's changed since then. And so every now and then, God tells me to give a hundred dollar bill to people to tell them that he loves you and he'll change your life if you'll give him control of your life. And I gave him the hundred dollar bill and this woman about my age, just mother, gave me a hug and she whispered in my ear, you'll never know. You'll never know how much they needed to hear that today. That is living beyond blessed. That's living beyond blessed. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to just take a moment and just tell the Lord, Lord, I do want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. But I never would have had the money to buy them a tank of gas and to give them $100 if I had not managed my resources. And I know that many people struggle with that. And I don't want you to feel guilty or condemned if you struggle in this area. But I do want you to get help. It's like driving a car or having some sort of a skill, playing an instrument, doing something else. You gotta have someone help you. You gotta have someone teach you how to do it. So. It's okay to ask for help in how to manage your finances because there are tools to help you. And there are many, many people who would love to be generous and they hear the message of generosity and they'd love to, but they've got so many bills and so many debts, so many obligations that they just can't. Some people feel like they can't even tithe through the local church. So we really do want to help you. So I just want you to just take a moment and just say to the Lord, whatever you need to say to him right now. If you need to say, Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me in this area. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I want us to be a people that we live a blessed life and we live beyond blessed. And that means that we have enough to be a blessing to our families and we have enough to be a blessing to other families. Lord, I want to tell you, thank you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for every person listening to this message, every campus, every church, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll speak to every person the message that you want to speak to our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that we will live a life beyond blessed so that we can be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Robert. I am I'm inspired. I want to be a better steward of what God has given me so I can be more generous on every occasion. I'm convicted, I'm challenged. So would you help me again thank Pastor Robert for the message today?